Richard Long, Esquire. The record. You know, Dave, finally just listen. In the U.S. of A., is he? Yeah. Yeah? Well, we're going to give him some good... Good old R.T. Get right out there. We're going to give him some good stuff to listen to, starting with this one. Phil Line, it's solo in Soho. Sit down there, Phil, and uh, say yeah. a few words to us, whatever you like. Yeah, one of the... Somebody who heard me on the show the other night uh, sent yeah. me in a bottle of uh, Puchin, mm. which is highly illegal. And so I will not drink it, but thanks very much for singing it. Sandin and Ren, I'll, I'll, I'll hand her over to the police immediately after the show. And, uh, no, it's great to see you. Great Thanks to for you. sending us in all the letters as well, anybody who wrote in. What have you been doing since uh, you talked to Dave, uh, Phil? I've been in Dublin, you know. Yeah. And, like, the last time I was on the show, I was drunk. You know, the worst thing about the show is that when you come on, it's always after the pub, the show... And uh, so consequently, the tongue is always loosened. Well, don't stop there. Loosen it a bit more, will you? Okay, right. Well, as opposed to just uh, blurbing on about, you know, myself and the solo and solo. So, jeez, I can't say it now. Anyway, but as opposed to just going on about uh, me solo stuff and stuff, I was going to, I brought down a few sounds I liked. And one of the sounds that I really liked was a Beatle track. The, I mean, there's a, I've, the, there's a lot of varied stuff I have down here tonight. Mm, the Stacks record too. You know, uh, but this one is from uh, the film Help, and uh, it's called You're Gonna Lose That Girl. You're Gonna Lose That Girl. From the film Help, that's uh, the Beatles, and you're going to lose that girl. Do you ever run into uh, George Martin, the old producer, uh, Phil? I met him once or twice, you know. Uh, yeah. He's still around. Producing but American people, I know. I thought, do you remember, see, the Beatles did a lot of their stuff in mono, and uh, at one stage he did stereo mixes of them, and I really got disillusioned in his production. You should have left them alone, should he? Yeah, should have mm, left them alone. Sometimes you have to. So I went off a bit after that, but I'm sure he's a very talented fella. We're going to hear a preview later on, aren't we, on the show? Oh, yeah, I'm going to play... I was told by Dave Fanning that I wasn't to play too many of the Timothy albums uh, of the new album because he wants to do it later on, but since we go back a long way, I was going to play some of the new Timothy album, obviously, yeah. and... Uh, I've been knocking about with Terry Woods and uh, his gang, the Hole in the Wall gang. Good company too. And uh, we have a uh, couple of stuff that we... On tape, we, did you have? Yeah, yeah. that we yeah. laid down. Uh, you want to have a dedication on the next record, don't you? Oh, yeah. Well, like, I'm supposed to be on the holidays and be spending all my time with my wife, as it's well known that I'm married now, and two children, and... Uh, uh, she like she used to like Brian Ferry, so I figure I'll play Brian Ferry for a, uh, over you. Okay. <laughs> hey baby, for Kathleen, who's the new baby? She's only five weeks old. And uh, I know she's listening to the show. Uh, but we'll get on to the serious stuff now, the music, which is uh, another love of my life. And it's well known that Van Morrison was a big influence on uh, a lot of the stuff I did. But, I mean, also was Jimi Hendrix. And in the early days, we used to play a lot of Hendrix stuff, you know. Um, and, and one of the favourite favorite tracks that we used to enjoy playing with Eric Bell and the band, and I still enjoy listening to it now, is uh, the classic, If Six Was Nine. In fact, I think we've another one lined up uh, just before it here as Which well. Which one? So maybe Little Wing. Uh, oh, Little Wing, are you going to yeah. play that? Um, oh, that's not bad either. That's there too. Six was nine is the killer. Yeah. Oh, it comes after. It's well, let's, let's see what happens here. We've plenty of time. 
Okay, yeah, Jimi so Hendrix said six was nine. I told you it wasn't uh, little Wayne. Come on. No, that's right. We decided to skip that one. That's from the Tibetan Book of the Dead, isn't it? The yeah. uh, I Ching. So, listen, tell us what you are doing. What I'm doing about what? Well, just generally, I know you're doing a Hendrix special. Ah, uh-huh, that's right. We're doing a Hendrix special next Thursday night with uh, Noel Redding, and it's pre-taped because Noel will be over in uh, Amsterdam, of course, next Thursday. Eric Bell is doing that with him, isn't That's he? right. This is a yeah. big sort of Hendrix festival, and Mitch Mitchell, of course, will be in the drummer's seat. Dead now? Ten years next uh, Thursday, the 18th of September. It's a while, it's isn't it? still missed, huh? Yeah, still missed. Uh, who's improved on him, I mean, you know? Well, there's nobody touching him. Well, that's it, you know? Yeah. So, uh, what are you going to do uh, in the next one? Well, we're off to Japan and Australia and America. Mm. And then uh, hopefully we'll be home to play some uh, Irish dates over the Christmas. And uh, so, because we're going to Japan, (laughs) since since I worked out, you wouldn't believe it. Because we're going to go to Japan, we're going to play... Uh, Something Japanese? Yes. Yeah. Would you know it? Yellow Magic Orchestra. This is what... No, my French is not too good. Translated, I think. That's La it. Femme Chinese, yeah. which means... Chinese... A Chinese woman. Woman, yeah. I think that's the word. Yeah. <laughs> Chinatown. Now, tell us about the single and the album. We have an acetate tonight on the show, don't we? Yeah, that's uh, that's the press that they sent me over from London today. Uh, the single comes out uh, on the 12th, which is today, really. Killer on the Loose. Killer on the Loose, mm-hmm. yeah. And uh, the album comes out in about three weeks after it, you know. Mm-hmm. So, Chinatown's already been uh, in the charts for us. So I hope everybody likes the album because it's really aggressive. Yeah, it really tracks is. Yeah. Play a few more. What do you like in the charts at the moment, anyway, apart from your own uh, records? Uh, I know you're the... Uh, I always regard you as the encyclopedia as, of rock, you know, but the one that's getting me off at the moment is uh, the Bowie single. And I have to play this as a special request for, uh, for somebody. Uh, so... If you could play that Ashes to Ashes. Yeah, it bears I really like that another one. hearing at least a thousand times. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's one of his favourites from the uh, charts. Phil Leinitz is on the show tonight. Phil from uh, Thin Lizzy, of course. And it's all his choice between now and 10 to 2. This is Ken Stewart on RT Radio 2 with you until close down, which is 10 minutes to 2 o'clock. And Phil just stepped out for a couple of minutes, so uh, I will just keep things going by playing uh, his next choice, which happens to be from their new album. And this is a song called Sugar Blues. It's over to you, Phil. Oh, yeah, that, well, that's the single. And uh, Sugar Blues was the recorded version. Because on the, the flip side of the Chinatown single, we had the live version from Cog. So, uh... Do you, like my, do you like my T-shirt? Yeah, it looks well. Yeah. What is we, it? We got sampled T-shirts of uh, the new Chinatown album, mm. uh, which is now being worn by Ken Stewart, showing that on RG2 we do strip in between things. <laughs> uh, no, the thing is, uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to strip everything really naked and we were recording the other day the other night with terry woods in uh, the radio center yeah studio right one here, mm. right here in ireland and uh, we did a session with terry and myself was uh, singing a couple of backing vocals and it's uh, a song written by terry it's a song called uh, i don't know about love <coughs> yeah there you go Terry Woods and myself in the studio messing around, having a bit of fun at RTE's expense some money. It was great fun. But the thing that that we were taking serious, I think that one was going to be a B-side or it's going to be on one of Terry's future albums. Yeah. But the one that I've all, for years now I've heard Terry play uh, a real sort of Doc Watson version of the Tennessee Stud. I remember so, uh, Country Joe MacDonald uh, yeah, doing that tonight and singing just for you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's background. a few versions of that. Yeah. And I haven't heard uh, Terry and your version. Well, what we did was uh, 
Uh, for the B-side, we did the ethnic version where Terry just sang it with the guitar. And uh, for the A-side, this is just a, a, a demo of it, which we did in RTE. But, like, uh, what we tried to do was uh, combine a rock version, a bit like what we did with Whiskey in the Jar, but, uh, like, uh, ten years and on sort of thing, you know. I think it's about I'd time Terry got the recognition he deserves oh, anyway. Yeah, definitely, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think this w will show a, a different side to Terry, Terry Woods, you know. Like, I think now's the time he's really going to come into his own. And this is a... Uh, it starts off with the, the ethnic sort of feel, and then you can hear my influences with the power of the thundering guitars. Yeah, looking forward to that. <laughs> uh, 